Welcome to another edition of Point of Order. I'm Bruce Carlin, your town moderator, and my guest is Elaine Lazarus, our town planner. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. And uh, what I was hoping to do today, uh, or with this um, edition, is to discuss a few articles, a, a couple of the planning board articles, or three of the planning board articles. We should see it again in the context of the town warrant. Um, we'll spend the first uh, dozen and a half articles of town warrant fixing our, our budget, uh, and that's the lion's share of what we, uh, we spend. There are next um, group of articles are capital improvements articles and uh, funding various funds and then uh, from article 30 through and I don't know what the number is like 42 or something we're going to be dealing with planning board articles and you guys work all year and come up with these brilliant ideas as to how to uh, better plan our town and um, so, Elaine, maybe you could give us some context as to what, uh, what the three articles are and uh, where they fit in your overall planning. Okay, all right. Um, so the process that these came out of uh, begins in the summer when the Zoning Advisory Committee is appointed by the Planning Board. And anyone who expresses interest will be appointed. No one is turned away. So it can be a large group or it can be a small group depending on the interest that year. And they start meeting in August or September and hold a public forum every October. And at that public forum, people bring forth ideas for changes in the zoning or other bylaws, and sometimes those get referred to others, or sometimes the committee will work on those too. But um, so then these start going through that zoning advisory committee process. And they meet twice a month, sometimes more often, to go through all the ideas that are suggested. And um, sometimes articles come out of those, and they recommend them to the planning board. And then the planning board decides to put them on the warrant and perhaps go forward with them. So that's how all of these articles came into being. So, um, does the planning board come up with any of its own articles? Uh, you know, sometimes they say, "Well, the ZAC and uh, the zoning advisory committee didn't come up with anything, but we need to do something about." The board will suggest to ZAC. Uh, and then if they come out of Zach, then that's fine. If they don't, then the board says, okay, they didn't come out of Zach, so we don't have an article on that this year. So the board has not set forth its own articles specifically. It, it, they always go through Zach. Okay. Well, that, so, that's interesting. So it's I think because unusually they... Unusually <laughs> democratic. <laughs> well, I think because they like the, the wide variety of viewpoints that are on Zach, it represents a huge slice of the community, and it really gets a broad vetting and I think they like the, what comes out of that. So I think they, they respect the process. So what do we, so what, <laughs> the first what, <laughs> what brings these three articles? We're, we're talking okay. about art, which articles? So we're talking about articles 31, 34, and 36. So we and can start why, with 31. why'd you decide to pull those three together? Well, I, because we're doing more than one show and they were grouped by <laughs> what I thought the time would allow. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. And they're somewhat related. So Article 31, and we do have a slide that shows um, a little piece of the downtown area. So this is B Street. So uh, Main Street is here. Um, the drugstore in the corner is here. So it's 85 and 135. So the zoning along B Street um, splits these lots. Now these are residential homes and when the zoning for the downtown area was originally drawn it was just, I don't know if it was arbitrary, but they decided to have the downtown business district go 300 feet measured from Main Street. So it cut these properties in half. And last year there was an article to even up, uh, the same thing occurred over here on Claflin and over here um, behind the post office and off Summer Street. And those were evened up at a town meeting article last so year. So what do you mean by evened up? So the, now the zone line- Instead of splitting the- So now the zone line runs concurrent with property lines. So before a small portion of these residential homes that was zoned business, uh, it was zoned residential and now they're all business. In the case of B Street, um, the Zoning Advisory Committee contacted the residents there. We heard from a couple of them that if we were going to change it, they'd prefer a residential district. So the proposal is to move the district line to where the dotted line shows so that the entirety of those 
lots on B Street will be within the Residence A district. The problem with having your lot split by a zone line is it doesn't extend beyond that. So theoretically, they could use their backyards for a business use, but there really isn't enough space to do anything there, and you can't go through a residential district to get to a business district because the use isn't allowed there. So for clarity for them, and when they sell their homes or when they want to put an addition on or do something with their property, it makes a lot more sense to have it all in one district. So as a homeowner, what you want to have is you want to have a, a single district. It must make the, the, uh, the tax assessment crazy, too. I don't know if that makes so much um, of a difference. Okay. I think it's more the use that's the important thing. Um, um, but in this case, the, really the backyards was so not really So you're talking usable. about helping five, um, five homeowners out with uh, uh, a clear-cut uh, yes. zoning. Yes. Yeah, and the two and the couple that we heard from, the two or three we heard from, said that they would prefer the residential district. So that's what's. So proposed. had they had they come to you and said, "Geez, we really want it as a business," you would have listened to that and yes. and changed the uh, yes, changed so accordingly. They yeah. all wanted residential. They did. So the communication was, "Which would you prefer?" Okay. So, so that's the that's Article Thirty One, and that's the proposal there. Okay, I think that's uh, that's pretty clear. So, and we can see how the nicely, uh, as a planner, I like the nice lines. That uh, nice follow, lines. Follow the yeah. property lines. <laughs> it really <laughs> looks beautiful. <laughs> Doesn't get better than that. No. That one's not such a nice line, but it'll work. Yeah. It's a, a little crooked. Well. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, okay. let's move on to Article uh, 34. So, Article 34, this is just the, the zoning map, just for, for context. So, Article 34, uh, right now um, in the downtown business district, which is a portion of the area we just saw, but it's right in the center of town. So, if we're looking, you're talking just to the right over. So, it's basically from Summer Street to the library and from. Um, on Grove Street, beyond Colella's, down to about the post office is the, the downtown business district. Correct. And within that area, right now in the zoning, um, it prohibits parking between a principal building and the street. So, for instance, um, if we had a vacant lot there uh, and along Main Street, one could not build a parking lot uh, between in a building and the, the Main building. Street. And the intent was to keep it a, a downtown streetscape and keep the integrity of downtown. The um, proposed change allows a special permit process for um, a property owner to have parking between a principal building and the street on one of the side streets of downtown. So for instance, Grove Street or Cedar Street. So keeping Main Street intact as the, where the parking is prohibited can't become a strip development, but allowing some parking on the side streets between a building and the street if one of those properties was to be developed in the future. And the the what, what's the reasoning behind that? The reasoning is to allow more flexibility. Um, we do have um, some issues in parking in downtown, and we may be losing some spaces as the downtown project goes forward. So to allow for future parking there that fits with the streetscape, so it will be designed to enhance the streetscape, it's a, the special permit process is discretionary, so the planning board will be looking at how it's going to be designed. Will it fit with the streetscape? Will it enhance the streetscape of downtown? So, but allowing so more with parking. the zoning change, you you retain the controls through the permitting process to to say we know what this will look like. That's right. So it's not by right; it's by special permit. So someone would have to explain why it's a benefit to the town, why it's going to enhance enhance the streetscape, why it's a, a good thing to do. Could you, ex I, I'm, uh, I'm a little fuzzy on this, so what type of, um, of development would you envision this would be? What would, what would you be looking at on, uh, what would be typical um, uh, well, I guess uh, I'm businesses thinking that would go in? Well, I guess I'm, I'm looking back to, say, the post office, when the post office was, was demolished and, and rebuilt. Um, at the par at the present at the time, they could not put parking between the building and the street, so that it's to the side. Um, if that was to occur again, the parking it, there would be flexibility. Uh, if it made sense to put it in the front and it could be adequately designed, the parking could have been located to the front of the building as opposed to the side. It's something I'm, yeah. you know, it's it's a it's a discretionary process. To, it depends on each lot, how big it is, how easy it is to access, uh, what that parking looks like, what it means. So I'm, I, I guess I'm unclear because I, I don't do any planning, as my family will tell you. But um, when you're 
planning a streetscape, uh, you know, you throw a word out there and, and I've got in my mind a picture of things that, you know, your, your building is right up against the sidewalk and I'm trying to think of w whether that's an improvement or, or not to, uh, and how a planner might think about that. Well, actually, the article does contain some language for the planning board to consider. So it talks about the streetscape being um, the trees, the buildings, the the front yards, um, everything that goes into our visual, the visual appearance of the streetscape as you're there, awnings, uh, signage, building height, uh, taking all that into account. So how will that look holistically if that is changed in the way that's proposed? And if it's a positive change, that's something that may be approved. Um, if it's not a positive change, it, it could be denied. And so it's discretionary on the planning board's part. Uh, so you're just, look. you know, enhance, so, so the purpose from the planning board point of view is just to say, let's give ourselves a little bit more leeway to uh, um, perhaps improve the look. You know, the streetscape may, may mm -hmm. look better with the parking in front. Right, a little more flexibility and uh, the option of, of not doing this is if somebody wanted to do something that was a benefit, it would require a variance from the Board of Appeals. That's a really high bar because of statutory standards that probably parking lot you know, may not be able to meet. So this allows more flexibility and a deliberative process that's based on that particular site, how it will look and how it will fit in. Okay. Um, have, have we uh, adequately, <laughs> did, did we get all the things that you wanted to say I about think so, that? I think so. I so, think so. So, you know, the intent is to still to retain that classic downtown appearance um, throughout this whole thing. Okay. <laughs> so let's move on to Article 37. 36, 36 I think, is, excuse um, me. So uh, oh, this yeah, involves yeah. Um, site plan review and the adoption of some lighting standards. So when new commercial buildings are being built or commercial sites are being developed. Um, they're required to apply to the planning board for site plan review. And it doesn't apply to residential, it's only commercial. And uh, through that process, there, the bylaw contains a list of standards that someone has to meet. Uh, one of those is a general lighting standard that refers to the um, a national organization that sets lighting standards based on use. And so what this article would do is expand that uh, criterion to include a lot of things related to lighting. Uh, for example, it would limit the height of light poles to 15 feet in parking areas. Now one of the things that Planning Board has heard recently from people is displeasure at times with how tall light poles are on certain sites that, the, that have been approved. What you don't want is light pollution in your house That's right. at, and so, uh, at night time. Right, so that you know, under the you know, dark sky type um, considerations, lighting should be focused. And it is focused down, it doesn't spill off the site, but sometimes those poles can be tall. So the planning board looked at that and said, you know, you're, you're right that sometimes they can be too tall, but we have nothing to hang our hat on to force people to, to bring them down. So this article would set that standard at 15 feet and 12 feet in pedestrian areas. So it would bring them down. We have some poles uh, in town that are maybe 20, 25 feet tall. Uh, not a, a not unusual circumstance, but, but they're out there. So this would bring that maximum pole height down and still have the, those same lighting standards used, but have it you know on site, not spill off the site. Um, it would also prohibit things like mercury vapor lighting and so forth and just to make sure that uh, things are the lighting is aesthetically pleasing um, and so basically to keep the light focused and keep it down uh, on the site. On, on, on the other side of that you want to make sure that those sites are safe so that the lighting is important for, uh, That's right. for those times. Um, <coughs> do, uh, are there hours that are restricted or is that? Uh, no, the hours are not restricted. So they still would be on for safety and security at night. Um, and sometimes in a site plan approval, the board will set hours when most of the lights go off, but they can keep the lights on for safety and security, whatever level is, is necessary for that. So that's, we don't have any circumstance where people are required to just shut all the lights off. So the standards that it um, refers to are the ones that this national organization sets and it's based on safety um, and security. So the, the standard refers to the average. They provide a range and this would come out to be the average. So it addresses a community concern that people have raised with regard to lighting. So 
the process was somebody said something to the zoning advisory committee. They they said planning board give us a uh, a bylaw and yeah. we, and we've basically gone through the process. Yes, yes. And then mm -hmm. you apply 60 days before town meeting and it's <laughs> on the warrant and. Now we're discussing it. That's right, and it came up recently with the Dunkin' Donuts proposal. Uh, there was a lot of uh, concern about the height of the light poles there. And I think the board and the Zoning Advisory Committee members took that to heart and said, what can we do about that? And this is uh, what they've... And, and, and was that applied to that before the, uh, in essence, um, de facto, before, uh, before that was... That's uh, right. So it, it will be whatever was approved. But actually, the, the Zoning Advisory Committee has been working on lighting for maybe three or four years now and was never able to come up with... You know, a bylaw that really, it's you longer know, it's, than it's that. So <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard these discussions uh, for many, many years. It's very difficult. And, you know, you consider all the implications of lighting regulations. Uh, you know, at one point they discussed possibly residential, and it was decided that really we, we, the issue is not residential. It's more the commercial lighting that's the concern as, as the town grows. And so um, there's been a lot of discussion over the last few years. And they decided this is really a targeted area, a focused area where we can um, make a difference and really address some community concerns about that. Uh, I'd like to get back to the whole process, which I think is fascinating, because I think this is, is truly democratic, and I, and I love it, in that there is a concern. You've got a, um, a group of concern individuals that are willing to put time in to the uh, to the process of planning this out and thinking this out they grab what they can from national ad, uh, advisory groups and then you sit down and say how does that apply to our town you put it together and and you put it out there what i also find interesting is sometimes you can put out a wonderful uh, uh, by law, and if people don't understand it, they say, oh, I don't want more regulation. And you say, okay. Um, I, I've often seen where some of these come back mm -hmm. just the way they were originally presented and get passed. It's always fascinating to me to watch, watch the process. But uh, this looks like a pretty good response to a uh, um, an established problem. Is there more to that article that you want to talk to us about? I think uh, I think that's it. We, there says uh, floodlights, also no blinking and moving lights. I think that's we've all seen. I think in other towns, some of the perhaps signage that's appeared in various places with, you know, Eat moving Joe's. lights and yeah, so right. forth. So um, I think those kinds of things were looked at. So uh, those would be prohibited as well. Um, and we're looking at. Um, you know, just the level of illumination, um, and uh, you know, so basically they, they, taking they've taken it into account a lot of uh, a, a lot of the concerns, and they focused it down just on the business. Um, but if, if somebody had some other concern um, someplace else, you bring it to the zoning advisory committee, and uh, and they'll work it through and get you what you want. Uh, well, they'll get you what you need, not necessarily <laughs> what you want. I, I think that's the other important thing about the process is that um, um, I, our town is blessed with wonderful citizen volunteers. And um, a group of um, smart people get together and make a, uh, a considered review of a subject and you come out with uh, a good piece of legislation that conforms to our community's needs. You know, not everybody's happy with it, but most are, and uh, it moves the uh, the whole process a step forward. I think a change like this is more forward-looking because it's future development that will comply with these regulations. The the projects we already have that have already been approved, that are already built, won't be subject to this unless there's a modification of some kind of the site. So but it's that happens. So it's planning ahead, thinking about how the town wants to grow in the future, how it wants to look, and you know, kind of lessons learned 
um, and then you know brought forward for, for future development. Do you think you could just uh, review all three articles? So uh, just give us a summary of, of what sure. you think is involved in each of them and uh, why you think they're so good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the first one was Article 31, which is adjusting the line in the, the residence A in the business dis the downtown business district. And that basically is a help for the homeowner. Um, and uh, just evening things up and making things easy for, so for that's, people that's as they So that's basically housekeeping for those five properties. It is. It is. And, and you talked with everybody on the property. Well, as much as, much as we could. Uh, and then the second article, Article 34, uh, would allow parking between uh, a principal building and some of the streets in the downtown area by special permit from the planning board. Um, it's discretionary. It's um, based on meeting some standards regarding the streetscape. And the article does contain um, a definition of what, what the board considers the streetscape and what's important. So uh, that's that's a change, and it remains prohibited along downtown. I mean, down uh, along Main Street. So Main Street stays the way uh, with the you, you've got to uh, you can't park between uh, the sidewalk and your and your place. Yeah, although we do have some, but uh, a that's lot of that grandfathered. Was grandfathered or a variance was issued by the Board of Appeals for the police station, for example, for the parking in front okay. of the police station. But that building is set way back, so there's a circumstance where maybe it. it makes some sense. Okay, so there are ways to, to uh, when you need to, we've got some uh, safety valves in mm -hmm. our, uh, the way we do business, yes. so that you, you do have the Board of Appeals, uh, right. the Zoning Board mm -hmm. of Appeals, for some issues where you could do it. But you, what you're saying in the, the planning of a place, I, I want to buy a property uh, someplace just off the Main Street in downtown. I can buy the property and just go through the special permitting because I, you know, whatever it is, I, I want to put a couple of parking spots in the front mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for my mail delivery service or whatever. Yeah, and they'll know it's special permit, it's discretionary, so they really have to work on it and make their case and make it a good one and design it well. So it's still, uh, the, the planning is there, it's just it, we've lowered the bar a little bit for, uh, for the developer and ma make it a little bit uh, easier for them to uh, to come up with a plan that yes, works. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And then finally, the and lighting. The filing of the lighting at, as a as applied to site plan review, which is for commercial projects, and it would limit the maximum pole height for uh, pole mounted lights to 15 feet in parking and um, driveway areas, and to 12 feet in pedestrian areas. It would focus the light on the site. Um, it would have to uh, be the average of the range of these national standards for that particular use. For example, some uses have greater lighting needs like gas stations, mm -hmm. and some have less, like an insurance business or, or something like that. Um, and so um, it would respond to that concern that was raised, and uh, it would also uh, prohibit certain kinds of lights like mercury vapor and so forth. Um, yeah, along just for our, our just along the way. So just it's, cutting it's for, the light pollution and yet remain, uh, maintaining the safety aspects. Right. And it's for future development. It doesn't apply to any property that um, is already built and developed today. So. Well, Elaine Lazarus, town planner, you have been a marvelous guest. <laughs> and uh, you, you realize, of course, that uh, uh, we have a legacy here in Hopkinton of being one of the first towns to have any zoning. Uh, and that was courtesy of uh, my predecessor, Chuck Zedek, who was uh, uh, a town planner way back before there were town planners. Yes. And uh, so I think that you continue the legacy, and uh, it's uh, marvelous to have you. We're very fortunate to have you as our town planner. Thank you. Uh, well, that does it for another edition of Point of Order. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm your host. Bruce Carlin, your moderator. Thanks to the HEF, HPTA, and 300th Anniversary Committee, we're bringing a program forward to honor alumni of Hopkinton High School. We're looking for nominations and the criteria include graduated from the high school at least 10 years ago, demonstrated a high level of achievement, and made significant contributions to work, 
home, community, or volunteer efforts, and exhibited leadership, character, and service. Please visit our website to participate in nominating your HHS grad. Hi, I'm Jen Belisi from Golden Pond Assisted Living in Hoppington. Staying active is essential to happy and healthy aging. Golden Pond has activities for seniors and people of every age. Different people have different uh, interests and different requirements. There is a diverse range of opportunities to be had at Golden Pond. I know, I know everybody. I go, go to many activities. I don't like staying home. I go to the cooking class on one day a week. They have different seminars um, that we participate in. Well, we do play bingo like many of the other residents. What do you like best about here? The people. They do nice things here. We've made some friendships, not acquaintances, real, real friendships. If you'd like to participate in any of Golden Pond's upcoming events, visit the events page on Golden Pond's website or call 508-435-1250 for more information. We hope to see you soon. Hi, we are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout Troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Hello, I am Marie Smith, and I am the chairperson of the Hopkinton Women's Club Community Register and Telephone Directory. We hope you have found our little book to be a helpful resource in the past. We are beginning work on the 2016 edition, and we need your help. Every household in Hopkinton receives one of these for free, and we want to make sure you are included. Our residential listings are based on the information we get from Verizon. If you have switched to a different provider, such as Comcast, we may not have your number. If you do not have a landline, we definitely won't have your number. Or maybe you prefer your cell number in our directory. So please take a minute and help us make the directory accurate and useful for everybody. Take a look at the Hopkinton phone book that you have and make any corrections in it. Or if you are new to town, please send us an email before June 30th. We would love to hear from you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jen Belisi from Golden Pond Assisted Living in Hopkinton. Staying active is essential to happy and healthy aging. Golden Pond has activities for seniors and people of every age. There is a diverse range of opportunities to be had. We've made some friendships, not acquaintances. If you'd like to participate in any of Golden Pond's upcoming events, visit the events page on Golden Pond's website or call 508-435-